Hey what is up, mortals? It is, Robo Celestial here with a new video for you. Welcome to the part 5 of what if Deku got one for all early season 3. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying. Sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. Kirajiri. I want you to leave with everyone else that's here, I want this brat dead and I want to do it myself. Kirajiri faced Shigaraki questioning his choice. But Shigaraki, are you sure? There won't be anyone to back you you. The malicious tyrant threatened by raising all five of his fingers right in front of Kirajiri's face. Shigaraki didn't even bother facing him when doing so. This left the foggy villain speechless. It shook him to his core. All of you would just get in my way. Don't question my leadership ever again. Kirajiri summoned a massive portal, warping everyone else to a different location. Why yes sir. Shigaraki stood there for a moment before hunching over and coughed up enough blood to fill a tub. The blood began to melt through the rooftop as his body began to dislocate and grow. Muscle fibers broke through his skin as his face deformed into something more resembling a Namu. Shigaraki took deep breaths to make sure his body was fully adjusted to his new form. Spiky protrusions grew out of his back and formed into wings. Meanwhile, Bakugo and Shoto arrived. They managed to outmaneuver the portal and slip by. During this grotesque transformation, Izuku smiled at both of his friends before grabbing both their shoulders with his broken hands and shared one for all with them. Izuku, Bakugo, and Shoto took a more aggressive battle stance. Midoriya cranked up one for all full cowling to 90%, while Bakugo and Shoto could only safely work under 30%. Though before he could even react, Shigaraki's hand clasped Izuku's face and flew off with him at high speeds, barely giving the trio any time to react. Izuku was caught off guard but managed to grab a finger with both hands keeping it off of his face to keep him from disintegrating. He slammed Izuku's head against the pavement as he continued flying before letting him go. He grabbed Izuku by his ankles and flung him straight into another building. Once Shigaraki landed he turned around only to be approached by Bakugo leaping towards him like a wild beast. The atomic blonde launched a full explosion right at the mutant villain. From within the smoke Shigaraki's arms swiped out, backhanding Bakugo in the face, sending him into a tree. His back smacked against the wood, causing him to sprawl to the ground. Knocking all the wind out of him, Izuku climbed out of the rubble. Cocking his fist back, Black Whip tightened its ties around his joints and bones as the output of Izuku's power increased. He threw his punch straight at Shigaraki's direction. A shockwave emitted from his fist, sending debris backwards and the air collapsed on itself in a line. The air shot through Shigaraki's lung before the wind expanded from the hole spreading it out as it forced Shigaraki to flip backwards before he latched onto the floor. He forced his body to fight back against the wind pressure, crawling in the opposite direction. Flames emitted from Shoto's left side. His flames were sucked in by the rogue winds of Izuku's punch. The monster was caught in the middle of this flame cyclone. His skin began melting off and regenerating over and over. Izuku was breathing heavily as that previous punch pushed his limits. Even with the assistance of Black Whip, his ulna and radius bones in his forearm expanded outwards from each other as they fractured. I'm ending this today Shigaraki. Shigaraki's crooked smile bled through the flames as he flipped to the side. Shoto retaliated with pillars of ice. The ice made contact with the deviant. But he easily grabbed the ice. It quickly shattered his skin but his grip strength outweighed the volume of the ice. Crushing it with his bare fists, the rampaging villain took a chunk of sharp ice and stabbed Shoto in his left shoulder. The shard fragment of ice poked at Shoto's heart. He was then kicked aside from the mutant Shigaraki. All of you are just insects. I feel like a kid playing with a magnifying glass. Bakugo recovered himself, focusing his explosions and shot a few AP shots right at Shigaraki. He stood there tanking the shots. Some of them exploded right on contact, creating a cloud of smoke while others shot through his skin. The holes left behind regenerated. Shigaraki flew straight up into the air before he dive-bombed straight back down raising his elbows to his face. When he hit the floor a massive shockwave occurred causing the floor within a one-mile radius to fragmentate. This pushed the three heroes back as the bits of broken floor flew omnidirectionally outward from Shigaraki. As the debris flew, the chunks would make contact with the heroes. Shigaraki rose up from the crater he made. I hope you can see how pointless your attempts are. All of these wannabe heroes coming out of the woodwork just to die. You three are the prime examples of things I hate. Trying to live up to the name All Might so bad you forget about the dangers of the world. Let me reteach you what life is really like under this stupid hero society. Izuku leapt forward, punching the ground which caused a small crater while elevating just slightly. Black Whip unwrapped itself partially from a few of Izuku's limbs. It wrapped around Shigaraki and Izuku landed on the ground, flipping the giant over his shoulder. 
tearing open some muscle fibers as he screamed with vigor. He continued the momentum in a circular motion back down through the broken rubble on the other side of him. Shigaraki ricocheted against the floor and slid into the pavement. Izuku didn't stop there. Black Whip rewrapped around Izuku for support before Izuku twisted Shigaraki's wrist, throwing him into a skyscraper. The unparalleled freak sat there for a bit before rising out of the rubble. Shigaraki sighed before wiping the dust off his shoulders. He was starting to grow annoyed. Shoto kept a hold of the spike of ice impaled into his shoulder. Blood dripped down his torso. Bakugo stood on top of the building that Izuku threw Shigaraki in. He fell head first and as he passed Shigaraki he launched the biggest explosion he could manage with the added bonus of one for all, blasting it straight into the building. Shigaraki took all this punishment as Bakugo landed on the floor. As he plummeted his arm went numb as a few joints fractured. Gah. Damn it, did I get him? Izuku threw his fist towards where the explosion occurred. The air pressure trapped the explosion inside, blowing the entire building up. A metal rod launched out flying by Izuku's face like a lance. A purple-haired kid indulged himself with a dirty magazine. Walking along the rubble, he wasn't paying attention to any of his surroundings. He was met with a cruel fate as he turned into a kebab, impaled to the wall behind him. A massive cloud of smoke was all that was left of that building. Izuku was hoping that this was it. The sun finally rose. It's been a long night. He couldn't go on for much longer. Izuku's spine was almost exposed as flesh surrounded it from Shigaraki's initial attack, skidding him across the street at high speeds like that, with Izuku in terrible shape. It was unsure even to him if he could continue like this. Shoto was out of commission. If he attempted to melt the ice it would risk blood loss. And if he didn't melt it fast enough it would impale his heart. Shoto began pulling out the chunk of ice from his shoulder. Yelling in pain as he did so, he immediately started bleeding until he froze over the open gash, preventing blood from spilling out and it put pressure on the gash as well. The silhouette of Shigaraki began to show itself from within the smoke. Their eyes widened. After everything they put him through, Shigaraki was left unscathed. Shigaraki's body deformed even more so. His limbs grew larger and his bones outgrew his skin, pointing out his spiky protrusions. Izuku couldn't help but feel helpless. Regardless, he couldn't let this thing rampage. He wore a brave face as one for all's lightning started peeking around his body. He then dashed towards Shoto and Bakugo, picking them both up and transported them a safe distance away. Bakugo refused to stay behind. You three have done enough. Typical of Class 1A to be reckless like this. But, I'll thank you for it later. Monoma gave a smirk to the three of them as Izuku stared at him. Now's not the time for your bullshit Monoma. Can't you see we're on death's door here? We need to figure out a way to stop his regeneration. Monoma chuckled a bit. Relax Midoriya. I didn't come all the way here to start spouting insults. I recently lost my teacher. I want a piece too. What can I do to help? An idea manifested in Izuku. He nodded to Monoma. I have a plan. But you're just gonna have to trust me on this. Monoma nodded and the plan commenced. Izuku first siphoned one for all out of Shoto and Bakugo. Letting them just rest while he went to finish this once and for all. Next he took Monoma with him. But dropped him off somewhere just out of Shigaraki's line of sight, keeping him hidden. Izuku then slowly approached Shigaraki. His head snapped from right to left as if he lost himself. Izuku began to pick up the pace and so did Shigaraki. They both clashed in the middle. Deku threw a few mighty kicks at Shigaraki as the villain retaliated with a single punch. When they met in the middle the air pressure was so dense that the light of the sun refracted from the epicenter. Blinding everyone in the vicinity as the shockwave passed, when the light came through and readjusted. Izuku laid flat on the floor with Shigaraki's fist against his chest. The force was strong enough to rip Black Whip. It lost all support around Izuku's body. Shigaraki began punching over and over and over at the adolescent, each punch causing him to rebound between the floor and his fist, dribbling like a basketball. Deku went limp and the cretin would then start to hover his hand over Izuku's face. Finally. The fruits of my labor are about to be fulfilled. Just before his fingers made contact, Monoma snuck his way around to Shigaraki, touching him and copying all for one, stealing the quirks as well but couldn't quite make it in time for decay. This was because the moment Shigaraki was touched he instantly turned around and swiped his fingers against whoever touched him. This turned Shigaraki back to normal and he spat out a ton of blood since his body rapidly devolved. This forced Shigaraki to go unconscious. Monoma looked towards the unconscious and badly beaten Izuku and began tearing up as he slowly wasted away. I'm sorry, Vlad Sensei. I'm sorry for not doing this when it was you. Monoma sat next to Izuku. He gazed up at the sky as he continued to cry. But his face also showed a smile. 
a smile only an accomplished self-sacrificing hero can muster. He collapsed into chunks of ash and swept away in the wind, back in the battlefield where everyone else was sent to. Outside of a few major injuries none of the heroes or villains were killed. In fact once the word spread about Shigaraki's defeat, the villains dispersed without a trace. The Namu shut down and went limp, as if they lost motor function without a master to guide them. A week passed. It was time for grief and reflection. Monoma and Vlad's funerals were held simultaneously by Yue on school grounds with a giant ceremony to remember their brave sacrifices. Everyone in attendance tried to hold back their tears during the speech Monoma's parents gave. We would like to start by saying thank you all for coming. He loved you all dearly. Even if he didn't show it all that often, that has been made evident from his sacrifice. We couldn't be more proud to be his parents. He showed courage, vigor, and strength in his final moments. We, we would like to say, it was too painful to continue for his mother. His father gently embraced her and finished off the speech. They both walked off with immense grief. Aizawa was up next to mourn for Vlad. Once again I would like to thank you all for coming today to mourn two great individuals we lost in the past week. I would just like to say that Vlad was always a rough person to work with. But he was that way to grow thick skin on those around him. He would be proud to know how many students were saved thanks to his sacrifice. It was never our intention for things to go as out of hand as they did. But it's because of tragedies like last week or why heroes are crucial for this society. We look after each other here. And we do our best. After this concludes, I would like everyone to walk away from here to respectfully mourn for those we lost. But keep your chins up for a brighter future because of their sacrifices. Aizawa began to make his way off stage. It was time for Bakugo to give some words. He tried to hold strong in front of everyone to help them push through. I don't know where to start other than saying he saved my life, our lives. But he gave up his in the process. I have never been someone to be thankful when saved by others but I want to thank my fellow student and hero. Because without him, we wouldn't be here today. Bakugo wiped the tears from his face trying to force his emotions back in after finishing his statement. Some time passed and the funeral concluded. Everyone went home mourning their friend and their teacher. Meanwhile, back in the city's medical facility, Izuku was strapped down to a medical bed. He was put under Teme's pan, a sleeping agent. He had tubes running in through his torso, keeping oxygen in his body. The IVs pumped programmed stem cells in his veins to help repair damages. His jaw was supported by tiny stilts keeping it in place. Inko stood outside of her little boy's hospital room, crying into her handkerchief. Dr. Yujiko stood beside her granting her the support she needed for this tragic sight. He will be coming out of this just fine. Don't you worry Mrs. Midoriya. I sure hope so. I warned him before you know, about being a hero and how much I didn't like him putting himself in danger like this. Dr. Yujiko patted her shoulder gently before continuing on with Izuku's surgery. He should be admitted from here in about three months' time. Please, catch some rest, miss. Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave we would just like to let you know that We The Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video. So goodbye and have a divine day.